Namaste and welcome to this brand new episode of our program Guest in Town. It's me, your host, Rohan Srastra. And today, in this program, we are going to discuss on the subject of photography. For this, we have our guest of our town, Mr. Jim Harrington, and he is from America. He is the senior photographer. Let me welcome him. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Nepal. Welcome to Himalaya Television. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Tell us something about this visit, since uh, this, I heard that this is the first time you are in Nepal. It's my first time in this whole part of Asia. Mm -hmm. so I'm working on a book about legendary mountain climbers mm -hmm. who were active between the 1920s and 1960s, mostly. And I just got a book deal. This has been a project that I've been working on for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Got the book deal, I got some money to finish it up. So I'm going around the world getting mm -hmm. the last of these mountain climbers. Mountain climbers. And so, I had to have a Sherpa. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to ha have at least one Sherpa from Nepal represented. Mm -hmm. And so I came to Kathmandu and ultimately Namchi Bazaar to photograph Kancha Sherpa, the last surviving member of the 1953 Hillary Expedition, mm -hmm. which was the first to summit Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. So that's what brought me here. Uh -huh. How many countries did you go for this book? Uh, for this book, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 so far. Mm -hmm. There'll be 61 climbers in the book. Mm -hmm. 61 climbers? Approximately, so yeah. How many climbers did you finish? So far, I've had about uh, 55, okay. 56. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Tell us something about uh, Nepal. You went to Namche Bazaar to capture that mountaineer, right? I Ooh. wanted to get this Sherpa in particular. <clears throat> So I was talking to his son for months, and uh, like I said, I got this book deal, and uh, I had to schedule all this travel all at once. There were two Japanese climbers that I wanted to get, uh, old climbers, and uh, I wanted to come and get this Sherpa, so... What is his name? Kancha Sherpa. Kancha Sherpa. He's about 84 years old. <laughs> They're not sure exactly how old. But he was on the 53 expedition to Everest. He was on the 63 American expedition to Everest with Jim Whitaker and mm -hmm. uh, Tom Hornbein. And um, so I had to fly to Kathmandu, uh, walk a few days mm -hmm. up to Namchi, where I finally met him and his son and did these pictures. How many days you stay in Namchi? In I was in Namchi for about two days. Okay. And then I trekked up, did a 90 mile trek around uh -huh. uh, Gokyo and Mount Everest base uh -huh. camp to see your beautiful mountains. Uh -huh. How did you find Namchi and Lukla? Mount Everest, let's say. Well, all of it uh, I've been looking at since I was a little boy in, uh -huh. in pictures. So Namchi is very different than some of the pictures, you know. What kind of difference did you find? What's, you know, they've got a disco and they've got in co Namche. coffee bars <laughs> and Wi-Fi and internet. And when I first started looking at pictures of Namchi, you know, it was a very far outpost, <laughs> you know. So, Nepal, through the perspective, or let's say the, from the eye of the photographer, how do you define Nepal? Well, you know, there's two Nepals that I've seen. One is the chaos of Kathmandu, which <laughs> is... Um, chaos of Kathmandu, chaos of Tamil, let's say. Yeah. Kathmandu in general. Um, I live in New York City, mm -hmm. and I'm very used to that. But, you know, people come to New York and they're flabbergasted, <laughs> much like I was with Kathmandu. You know, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a feast for the eyes and the traffic and everything. It's exciting. Mm -hmm. It's totally new. It's totally different. And then you go to the Himalaya, where I went, and, you know, it's the most beautiful mountain range in the world. Mm -hmm. And the rhododendron forests going up there and the beautiful people, the Sherpas and the villages. It's one of the best trips I've ever taken in my life. From New York to Kathmandu to Lukla, how do you see the development of Nepal? The development? Mm -hmm. Overall <coughs> development, let's say in terms of education or health or something else, tourism and all. Hmm. Well, I've been very impressed by the young people that I've met and I've met a lot of young people mm -hmm. and they seem as modern as anybody. Both in Kathmandu as well as in Lukla. Kathmandu by and beyond Lukla, like uh, up at Gokyo, mm -hmm. and way up there. The kids are completely smart, with it, resourceful, cool, funny. 
So, um, you know, you've obviously got some problems with the earthquake and other things, but it was great to see these kids who I think are just as cool as any kids in the world and, and modern. And uh, it was very refreshing. Mm -hmm. So and you enjoyed really it a lot. Great people. I really <laughs> love the people here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell us something about your inspiration for publishing the book. What inspired you a lot to publish this book, to capture the mountaineers? Well, to me, books were always even more important than having a museum show. Mm -hmm. I, I love books because you can hold them and they last a lifetime. You can design them and make it exactly the way you want it to be. So as a photographer, someone very concerned about the way one's work is represented, books are ideal. So I've always loved books, collected photography books. Knew I would do one someday. Mm -hmm. I did all this music celebrity stuff for years, and I think most people thought that would be my first book, but it was the climber book. Mm -hmm. Which I, um, I never really schemed about this. It was very naive how I got into it, and it Mm -hmm. this big project without me realizing it. But I like the fact that it's actually uh, not the music stuff first. It's a little more unique. I haven't seen anyone really still do this series on these guys. Mm -hmm. and, and through these years I thought someone would beat me to it. Mm -hmm. But I'm still the guy doing it. So, um, and I think it's a very interesting time in, in climbing and history. And to meet these old guys who, who's whose days are kind of over. I mean, they're old. You know, some of these guys have been 100 years old, mm -hmm. 90 years old. Can you please share something on that? The people, the different uh, mountaineers you capture in your book, for your book. Can you please tell something about those people? Well, you know, they're all different. Some of them are you know, dirtbag climbing bums. Some of them are um, lawyers and doctors. You know, climbing has attracted so many different kinds of people. But, um, but they're very forceful, strong people, um, much like show business and music, you know, <laughs> there's a certain amount of ego involved, driven to do things. Um, I see a lot of the same temperament in the music world as I do the climbing world, and the same in the music world. You've got some very humble people and some very you know, you know, prince-type characters. It is very similar to that field. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. So, you know, and again, to see some of these people in their twilight years, people that have been so forceful and have controlled their lives so much, um, it becomes less about climbing and, and more about something else, mm -hmm. this project, about ego and how it changes and how uh, what you think is so important when you're younger and how those things change, what you accomplished in the world, what does it mean now? Mm -hmm. Every work you carry a story. What is the importance of story in photography? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out. Why can't I just relax <laughs> and shoot something just for the artistic? Uh, I need some validity of uh, fact, maybe, story. I love history. I feel like I'm wasting time if I'm just going out shooting something pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these people are dying. I love history and, and things are changing and I, I, maybe I feel some kind of duty to document it. Things that have influenced me, mm -hmm. much like the music and... Yeah, I don't know, but I, I'd really like the quirky stories of life mm -hmm. and humans and how we all end up living on this planet. So there is no reason that why you are following this story for your photograph? No. Concrete reason, you haven't been able to find I'm out. just acting on impulse. It, mm -hmm. It's very innocent and naive, really. I mean, I've tried to corral it into a uh, very serious professional thing, but it's, mm -hmm. it's childlike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is. Uh, I just get enthused about stuff that I think um, I guess I feel like people should know about it. Mm -hmm. Just like the books that I saw, I was like, wow, someone chose to uh, document whatever. Like Eugène Aget, his street photos of Paris in the turn of the century. I mean, he chose to go out 
early morning when no one was around. Oh. It looks like this empty Paris. And just photograph these storefronts. Nobody else ever did that. What is your style? I don't know. Uh, you know, I think you see it in the photographs, whatever it is. I mean, you, you try to stay true to that thing you do, and you certainly still copy, mm -hmm. be influenced by. But, um, you know, even if you steal something, if you've got a strong style, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter that you steal it. I mean, just like Keith Richards, I mean, you know, <laughs> people steal all the time. But if you have a strong enough thing of your own, you turn it into something else. So, yeah, I'm inspired all day long by young photographers I see and certainly old senior than you historical photographers. I'm always I have a library at home of the, the great old masters. And that kind of thing. Do you draft some plans before going for the work? Uh, well, like the climbers, um, the plans are just finding them before they die. Because uh, I've missed a bunch, you know, these people are very old. So finding them before they pass away is mm -hmm. important. Um, you know, I'm trying to get a good mix of people. It was originally very American heavy, mm -hmm. this climber book. And you know, I, I learned early on that I wanted this to be a worldwide thing. So, you know, I've tried to balance that out and plan to, to do other things. But as far as the photos themselves, not at all, because I never know where I'm ending up. Uh -huh. So come whatever in, comes? I don't know. Just... I, I come into a house, the lighting could be horrible. So it, there won't be any plans? You can't have any plans because there's no way to plan for, oh, this uh. lighting is terrible. So after clicking the snap, you try to create this story for your photograph? Try to create? Mm -hmm. No, the, the story exists already because of the person. He has a story, mm -hmm. he or she. You know, sometimes I only have an hour, or to maybe two hours, mm -hmm. or maybe 15 mm -hmm. minutes to sort of sum up that person in a way that I want to show them that's not trite or cliche. Mm -hmm. Maybe adds my personal vision, but is also kind of honest to the person and uh, you know it's it's it can be difficult to mm -hmm. do all that while also being friendly and meeting someone for the first time mm -hmm. because you know some of these guys are old and they just want to talk <laughs> but i'm like oh, where am i going to photograph how am i going to make this good i have 20 minutes the light's terrible the background's terrible <laughs> and i've come 5,000 miles for this one Click. picture mm -hmm. so it's tricky <laughs> <laughs> I've got your visiting card in my hand it has used what black and white color yeah. I while going through the website of yours I found that you try to play with the black and white color what is the reason behind this well it's just the tools I've always used mm -hmm. um, it's comfortable um, I think it's sexy using cameras that uh, don't use electronics mm -hmm. I like the natural process of silver nitrate being exposed. But, you know, I think it's also like a painter. Uh, you wouldn't ask a painter to suddenly sculpt. It's just the tool that I like. Uh, I like the way it looks. The digital doesn't look the same to me. Um, Does this black and white carry certain meaning to you? Well, I do like color. And I do shoot in color, but uh, the black and white, there is I guess there is, I'm not really into vintage mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. so much. I mean, maybe I am, I listen to a lot of old music and old everything, but my choice for black and white analog film is not a vintage choice. It's the tool I've always used. However, it does have a, a, a classic look to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I guess I am influenced a lot by all those photographers that I loved from the 1800s to, now. to the 1960s mm -hmm. who were shooting on the film. You know, it's, it's kind of a school of thought or a thing that I guess subconsciously I want to carry on. Um, 
it, you know, I just, I, you know, it's comfortable. It's mm -hmm. my tool. Mm -hmm. You just said that while talking that you are mesmerized, you are influenced by the old heroes of yours and similarly the newcomer as well. How do you analyze the overall trend in photography from your time, the analog time to digital <coughs> era? Well, you know, it's very democratic now. I mean, everybody is a photographer. Everybody, there's a camera attached to everything, you know, there's cameras on watches. <laughs> But people have always loved photography. You know, mm -hmm. George Eastman made the, the Kodak camera in the 1880s that for the first time allowed anybody to take a picture. So it's not really a new thing. Mm -hmm. People have always wanted to, uh, to be photographers. They want to take good pictures. Can we call them a People always apologize to me, oh, I don't take pictures. But they don't say, oh, I'm not a good brain surgeon. Mm -hmm. but for some reason, people think they should be taking good pictures. So there is some drive that everybody wants to do this. Can we say that they are a photographer? Hmm? Can we say that they are a photographer? Sure, of course. Just like I'm a water drinker. If you take a picture, you're a photographer. Or is there any some criteria to become a photographer? That becomes Bec an elitist conversation that I'm fully prepared to have. But, uh, <laughs> You know, I, you know, I can be a real pain in the butt when it comes to talking about these things, but I, I love the fact that anybody can go out and do it. You know, mm -hmm. I come from a kind of punk rock aesthetic mm -hmm. in the late 70s where I thought, you know, anybody should be able to go make a movie, make a record, be a photographer. Mm -hmm. Well, that's come to happen, and everybody's making records, making movies, all in their basement. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's allowed a lot of terrible work, but it's allowed a lot of fantastic creative voices to come out that never would have had a chance. Um, so you're a bit neutral towards that? I can have opinions that change by the minute. I mean, I, I sort of miss the old days of kind of proper photographers doing things, but that's also against my innate feeling that anybody should be able to do it. Don't you feel bad? That time, the struggling time, and the now, everyone is a photographer. Yeah, I do. I mean, um, you know, I spent my whole life trying to be as good as I could. Mm -hmm. And by the time that happened, digital happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I felt like I could maybe start retiring. And now it's just time to start working more than ever. Well, um, yeah, I go back and forth on the opinion of... Uh, I see so many great young people doing fantastic projects, and that's great. But I, you know, I, I miss the fact of uh, the real thing. Just not being so many photographers. The real flavor. Yeah, I mean, there used to be terrible photographers. I mean, it's not like bad photography is a new thing. There's always been bad photographers, but you know, there's there was kind of it's like the old movie system in Hollywood movies. You kind of had to prove yourself as a director. Or As an actor, actor, cameraman, mm -hmm. to, director, to everything. Finally, make it into movies, and I think it was kind of like that with records, music, photography. You sort of had to prove yourself, and then you were in a sort of a world. But that's also kind of an old fart talking. Um, I think it's important for young people to be able to do it. This is the digital era, and you still use the uh, films. I still. Shoot what is films. the reason behind uh, this? I just, um, the cameras I have, some of them are 30 years old, mm -hmm. 50 years old. They work exactly as good as they did when they were made. I have cameras from the 50s and um, they just do their job beautifully. It's like a 1950s Telecaster guitar. It's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. I like, um, I kind of feel like I'm cheating with digital. I could take a ton of pictures. But don't you think that while using the digital cameras, uh, you can add up more flavor on it? I don't need more flavor. I have enough flavor. <laughs> uh, my flavor is a black and white film and a Leica M6 or a Hasselblad. Uh, that's flavor enough. Uh -huh. The rest of the flavor is out there being photographed. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm kind of flavorless. Uh, <laughs> you know. You are a climber as well. I am a climber. Mm -hmm. How many mountains have you climbed? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, Which one? You haven't climbed. Uh, you haven't uh, planned to climb Sagarmatha or not? 
Mount I've, Everest. Uh, well, I've always thought about it, mm -hmm. but this is my first trip. This time you went to Namche. You saw Sagarmatha, you saw Well, Mount I went Everest to Everest Base Camp. Here. I, yeah. I, I, Everest Base I went camp. to the bottom of Everest, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, you know, as a climber, it's weird to go that far and stop at the bottom of the mountain. <laughs> it's very uh, unclimber like <laughs> and just look at it and then turn around and leave. But, you know, Everest is $35,000 for a permit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, two months of acclimating, and I'm here working on a book. book, so... And I'm not right exactly now. in mm -hmm. Everest shape at the moment. <laughs> do you have some plans in the future or not? Yeah, I would like to come back. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I would do Everest by the South Coal, mm -hmm. or even Everest at all, it's so crowded, but something. I'd love to do Amadablam. <laughs> Amadablam. Or Cho Oyo, or mm -hmm. you know, anything I could get up. Mm -hmm. At this point, what of them about the mountains of a different part of the world, the highest peak of different countries? Well, uh, you know, the, I love the Alps and I love the Sierra Nevada in mm -hmm. California, mm -hmm. uh, the Tetons in America. Those are the places I've climbed the most. The Pyrenees mm -hmm. in Spain. I'm going back to the Alps in mm -hmm. about two weeks. Mm -hmm. One thing, uh, everyone, everybody has some bad timing in their career. Oh, yeah. I got lots of those. What about yours? Bad timing? Uh -huh. Bad timing, bad time, let's say, the struggling time, everything. Oh, unbelievable. I could do a... Well, I always joke that I want to do a book, mm -hmm. um, and it's just blank pages, and the name of it is Photos I've Never Taken. Mm -hmm. Because I've missed... Because my specialty is these old people in music and climbing, some of them die before I get to them, so... I've missed some really important people. Um, I've had terrible timing throughout mm -hmm. my career. Mm -hmm. But that's just the way it is when you work in this kind of genre, I guess, that I work in, is things are going to go bad and mm -hmm. you're going to miss people and people are going to die and you can't get hung up about it. But yeah, I've had nothing but disappointments, <laughs> <laughs> lots of them. Okay. But that's what makes it exciting, too. Mm -hmm. Do you have some tips for the photographer to become a good photographer? Yeah, well, um, you're going to do what you're going to do, but I say uh, really look at the history and see what people have done before. Make sure you're not uh, doing something someone else has done. Get a good visual vocabulary, and that could be looking at photography or movies or anything, but. I think a lot of people just kind of pick up cameras and start dabbling, mm -hmm. which that's cool, but I always thought really doing your homework, learning about the history of it, seeing all the processes. If you're really serious about photography, seeing wet plate collodion and gum dichromate and mm -hmm. uh, all these processes through the years and how they sort of dictated the way photos were taken in a certain era, mm -hmm. I would say do all that homework. Mm -hmm. It's been so long that you have been enrolled in photography. There is one reality in Nepal that uh, becoming a photographer is a bit difficult to sustain their life. What about in the U.S. or other parts of the world? It's what is the your same experience? all over the world right now. There's How difficult is it to run the life? It's very difficult. I mean, you've got to be very savvy. You know, it's so much more than just being a photographer or a good photographer. You've got to know business. You've got to have an angle. You gotta know how to promote yourself. You gotta have a lot of luck and be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> um, if I was young, I probably wouldn't get into photography now. I don't know what I would do, but um, it's... Why, why so? Well, I don't know. There was just something a little more sexy and unique about it and <laughs> sort of adventurous when I was young. And now everybody's doing it. And everybody's I'm, a I'm never interested in what everybody's doing, <laughs> so... Um, but, you know, I applaud the kids that are getting into it now because it's challenging and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But you can still do it and you can always rise to the top. And that's always going to be true. Mm -hmm. There's just more top to get on top of. <laughs> so it's difficult, not only in Nepal, in the rest of the world. Oh, I, I think it's exactly mm -hmm. the same as Nepal, as in New York City or Paris. And what should be done? What should be done? To make this field more professional, let's say. Well, there's always going to be, uh, well, to make it more professional, um, 
I don't know. You know, people have sort of infiltrated the photography world as sort of semi quasi professional people who people kind of believe that they're professional. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, and it's all subjective too. Uh -huh. You know, it's like if you think a photograph is fantastic, mm -hmm. then it is. And who am I to tell you? <laughs> Again, I'm just an elitist, uh -huh. highly opinionated person. Uh -huh. But um, you know, it's got loose borders uh -huh. for photography, and some of the people have died and gone away that sort of dictated what photography was. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's uh -huh. open game, open season. What about in your time? Well, I, you know, I, I sort of have a god, and his name is John Sarkowski. Mm. Do you know who he is? Uh -huh. He was the curator of mm -hmm. photography mm -hmm. at the Museum of Modern Art okay. mm -hmm. for 40 years or mm -hmm. something. And he, I hate to say I follow anyone, but he really dictated in a way that I uh, kind of followed what photography was. And, you know, he was very serious about it. He kind of helped Diane Arbus, Gary Winogrand, Lee Friedlander. He recreated the careers of Paul Strand and all these greats of 20th century photography. He either discovered or dug out of the ashes. And you don't hear these serious conversations these days. That's the kind of school I came from. Mm -hmm. was like people really serious about it. Um, I never meet anyone who talks about photography like that anymore, so I don't know where it's going. Mm -hmm. I guess we are running out of time. If you have got something to share with our audience in one line, then you are free. feel free to mm. share. don't know what to say, except that I love Nepal, and I'm coming back in a few months, I hope. Uh, one month is not enough, and it's a beautiful place with beautiful people. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Jeff, Thanks for your so time. Much and for your opinion. All right. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, the audience, for your time as well. Please do stay with us for more news and entertainment. Back is us. Keep on watching Himalaya Television. Namaste.